We are here in Hopkinton with Brendan Tedstone before he goes off to prison, as he does every day, on his way over to work as a nurse to work with the men at Norfolk Prison. But before his shift begins, we are here in his home to get to know a little bit more about his work and his daily life. Hi, Brendan. Thank you for having me in your home today for Meet Your Neighbor. Sure. Thanks for coming. We're here in Hopkinton. You have a lovely home, and we're here by your fire, and yep. it's a... Uh, it's a cold spring day out, out here, and um, it's a nice place to be. And I understand you've been here for quite a while. I have. I've been in Hopkinton uh, my whole life. Mm -hmm. um, and then my mother's been here her whole life. And wow. Uh -huh. Her parents been here their whole lives. And so, it's so your grandparents, yep. they were the first of your no, I ancestors? Think so. I think there was no, even a, a, a generation or two before that. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, wow. Yeah. So you have deep roots in the town. Yep. Uh -huh. Yep. And Absolutely. So I believe my kids are either the fifth or sixth generation wow. from town. Wow. Uh -huh. So you are an official townie. I think so. If I'm not, my kids definitely are. Uh -huh. I don't know if I've if I've put in enough uh, generations, but I think my kids definitely get us into it. Uh -huh. Okay. Well. Uh then congratulations to the oh, children. Thank you. And I know by your photograph, you have a beautiful family yep. living here, as yep. uh, they being the fifth generation. Yep. Uh huh. Um, and so, have you lived in Hopkinton all your life? I have. Uh, the only time I haven't is if I was away for work seasonally, mm. whether it was uh, I worked for a managed care company for a little bit and yeah. put me out in California or played a little hockey here and there, and that put me uh, through different cities in the country in Canada. Uh -huh. But for the most part, I always got my mail here in Hopkinton. Wow. Uh -huh. And you came back after did. those different places you've yeah. been. I never found mm -hmm. a better place to live. Whoa. Well, that's a great statement yeah. uh, to hear about our town. Yeah, um, it's a great town. How was it for you to grow up as a child? I know you have children now, you're yeah. on the other end, but how about you as a kid in Hopkinton? Well, I grew up on Chamberlain Street down mm -hmm. the road just past the high school. and. Um, it was a it was a great neighborhood to grow up in, and uh, one of the things that I've noticed in in my generation is the, the neighborhoods are kind of lost hmm. compared to what hmm. it used to be, yeah. um, for whatever reason that is. Uh, I can tell you that we used to go out on Saturday morning at five in the morning, six in the morning, hmm. and go out and play with the kids in the neighborhood. And um, that's pretty early. Yeah, and we'd come home at supper time, and, wow. and our parents would think nothing of it. And we might not even come home at supper time. We might sleep at a friend's <laughs> house. Uh, uh -huh. But we must have had, you know, 15 or so kids that we would play wow. hockey or capture the flag or wiffle ball or kickball or mm -hmm. basketball, anything, just to just to uh, pass the time. And it mm -hmm. was it was great. They're all lifelong friends. Uh, mm. They still are. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, and their parents were mentors to us. So it was uh, the guy at the, at the very end of the street, or at the beginning, depending. I lived at the very last house on Chamberlain Street, mm. where my mother still lives. Oh, okay. And um, the, the guy at the beginning of the street was named Cook Cumlin, and uh, just one of the all-time greatest guys I've ever met in my life. And I worked for him uh, when I worked at the highway department. Uh, I knew him growing up, mm. and he was just a, a wonderful guy. And I was friends with his his son Dave was my first youth football coach with Rick Flannery, who's the retiring police chief. Mm. Um, his daughter Janice and I, we, we were friendly. Mm -hmm. uh, coming down the street a little bit, you got uh, uh, Mr. Slammon, Buzz Slammon, mm -hmm. who was on the fire department forever. Uh, his son Steve Slammon is the deputy chief now on the department. Mm. Uh, we, after we became adults, uh, chronologically, not behaviorally, we uh, we had a, an apartment together on Hayden Row, Steve Slam and I, and the Urowitz kids. Uh, they live two houses up from me, and uh, Rich is a he owns American Climbers, uh, that big tree company mm -hmm. in town. Who they're doing a Nat Geo's doing a big, huge television series on him right now uh, called Urban Axemen, and wow. uh, still lifelong friends. You know, at, oh. at the uh, at my wedding a few years ago, we could have gone out and had a kickball team, we would have known who was the team, we know who would have won. Uh, wow. uh -huh. So it was, uh, that was the thing. In, in Hopkinton, you develop lifelong friends, mm -hmm. not transient friends. Mm -hmm. um, I can remember when I first started playing minor league pro hockey, <clears throat> I would go out and do my thing, 
and I'd come back and I'd show up at the dynasty and um, you know we would be sitting there and people would be talking about what a junky little league player I was. Not about the fact that I'm playing I'm getting paid to play pro hockey. Uh-huh. The yeah, fact yeah. that I stunk at little league or I was a you know missed the bus when I was yeah. in fourth grade or something like that. Keeping you know? it real. Yeah. That way. Oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, it was nice. Yeah. It was nice. So And your friends are still in town? Yeah. Well mm-hmm. yeah, for the most part they mm-hmm. are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um either either Hopkinton or surrounding town, Milford, mm-hmm. whatever. But mm-hmm. for the most part they're still in town and uh Rich and I, the Urowitzes and we went up to the Easter egg hunt together. Now we both have a kid that's two years old, so uh-huh. they're going to grow up together. Uh huh. Wow. Um, and it goes on. It does. It's, mm-hmm. uh, and it's great. It's a it's a great lineage to have. And, mm-hmm. um, but growing up, you were quite a bit more afraid of uh, of uh, of your parents and the police. You know, like mm-hmm. uh, if you did something wrong, you would hope that Officer Adams or Harry Carver or one of those people would catch you mm-hmm. and deal with you, rather than put you in the car and bring you home and say. You could get caught lighting fires at the reservoir because mm-hmm. then your your folks would put the screws to you pretty hard mm-hmm. uh, versus versus just the cops. So mm-hmm. it's changed. Everything's changed. But uh, where we live now, it's a great uh, it's a great area because there's a, a little piece of land that I that I got on the other side of my house that I've turned into a like a I put a swing set on it and a playground and there's uh, my brother lives right next door to me. He's got wow. three kids. Uh, uh-huh. We share a driveway. Uh, he's got three kids. Actually, his youngest son and my son are born on the exact same day. Wow. So, uh-huh. um, and then all the other neighbors have kids. So in the summer, on a nice day, there's you know 10, 12, 14, 15 kids out in the out in the yard. They're learning how to ride bikes or mm-hmm. swing sets or soccer or or whatever. So, so you're bringing it back. We're a bringing little, the neighborhood yeah. back. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. yeah. And how's that going? Is it's that good. working? Yeah, it's working good. out. Well. Mm-hmm. All my neighbors except one are really good people. Uh huh. Wow. One is really not, but that's all right. Uh-huh. We'll deal with them. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're all uh, they're all really good people, and it's just a, it's a great you know winters. It just everyone goes into hibernation mode, and we don't see people unless they're out walking in the snow or sledding or whatever. But mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, just this weekend, we had the bikes out and you know a few band aids for the young kids learning how to ride a bike without training wheels on the lawn. And mm-hmm. but it's uh, it's nice. It's it's bringing that back. Mm, well, that sounds great, and yeah. it sounds important. It's important to me mm-hmm. yeah. and my wife. We mm-hmm. both feel the same way about that. It's, it's nice. Um, I was wondering, you mentioned your friend's fathers, that mm-hmm. they were important in your life. Uh, it sounds like in mentors in a bit. For sure. What would you say yeah. are a few things that you especially learned uh, from them as mentors? Well, for, for Cook, Cookie, uh, I would definitely say... I got thick skin, mm-hmm. and I learned a little sense of humor from him. He was mm-hmm. a great guy, and mm-hmm. I understand you have a very good sense of humor. Uh, you do. have a reputation in town. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, Cook was a was a wonderful, wonderful guy who uh, I think about often. Mm-hmm. He was um, he was funny. I worked for him when I worked for the highway department. He was our foreman, and he had a sense of humor. But you worked, you, you know, you wanted to work for him, mm-hmm. and. Uh, you didn't want to disappoint him, or um, or his boss Bobby Bartlett, who, if you look through the woods over there, you can see his house. Yeah. Okay. Uh, another another absolutely phenomenal person in town. Mm-hmm. Uh, the town lost a lot when he left as the highway surveyor. Mm. He's a he's a really a, a great guy. But yeah, Cook was a Cook was a wonderful man, um, and he was a World War II veteran mm-hmm. and just a just a great guy. And then Mr. Slammon. Uh, he was a guy that you'd have to step on his foot twice for him to say, ouch. Mm-hmm. He was always had a smile on his face. He mm-hmm. was on the fire department. Every time I'd get in trouble, which was often on the fire department, uh, we, you know, I'd talk with him about it. He'd laugh it off, and we'd find some way to laugh it off, even though I was in pretty deep trouble. Mm-hmm. Um, and he just, you know, if, you, and if anything ever broke, you could bring it to him. You, you know, I can't tell you how many lamps we had in our house that had buzz slam and replacement cords on them or... Uh, you know, we would he would come yeah. down with the fire truck. This is in the 70s, and there were two uh, two ponds that we would skate at, uh, mm-hmm. Petapits and Wards. And once we were done skating at Petapits, we'd go over to Wards, and then he'd come over and blow it off, and then flood it with the fire truck. And then when we were done at Wards, he'd blow it off and flood it. So on the next day, we'd have two brand new ice services to wow. skate on. Mm-hmm. Um, 
you know, my mother and, and his folks, uh, my mother and and, uh, and the Slammons were really good friends, and they still are. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, Mr. Slammon died uh, about a year, year and a half ago, and uh, I was actually honored, and I mean honored, that uh, I was asked to do the eulogy mm -hmm. at his funeral. Wow. And it was uh, it was a hard one to write, but a, it was a it, he was a great man. I was honored to do mm -hmm. it. Uh, and his son Steve and I are, are best of friends still, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and I'm sure that uh, you know he doesn't often admit in front of the certain people that he and I are best of friends because you know it can't help his status in town. But uh, it's definitely true. We're we're great friends, and uh, my mom and, and Mrs. Slam are still great friends. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know that's how it, that's how it went back then, and mm -hmm. you know hopefully we can start that generational thing again where yeah. you know with the, Steve and myself, and you know my kids. His nickname's Scammy. So every time we drive down by Carboni's, my kids, my kid who's two years old, says, "Can we go to Scammy's house?" Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, and then you know the same thing with the Urowitz. It's, it's a deep it's sense a, of connection is. and loyalty and very friendship. Deep. Mm -hmm. Very deep. Very deep. They're those. Even though they're not your family by blood, they're mm -hmm. your family by mm -hmm. you know proximity. Mm -hmm. That, that makes uh, the world smaller yep. in some ways when we uh, have that kind of connection around us. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Well, well, I know uh, from childhood uh, and spending a lot of your days uh, with your friends and, and your friends' parents and uh, that kind of a community, you went on to school. Mm -hmm. And uh, how, did, how did that go? School years for you? Well, school was... A lot of like high school was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I uh, I did not go to Hopkins and I went to St. John's and then I went in Shrewsbury and then I went up to Keefe Tech in Framingham, mm -hmm. and uh, practiced uh, actually perfected my art in uh, not doing much, mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> and then I kind of floated around, kicked around, and I worked construction when I first got out of high school. Yeah. That's what I went to high school for, mm -hmm. to learn how to run front end loaders and back hose. Mm -hmm. So I did that for uh, Tommy McIntyre, uh, another prominent mm -hmm. Hopkinton guy, mm -hmm. uh, who was, uh, if you look over that way, you can see his house in uh, my kitchen window. Okay. So uh -huh. um, one of my all time best friends and, and uh, another guy that I you know, tremendously look up to, he's done great, and he's mm -hmm. just a great person. Mm -hmm. Um, so I did construction, I worked for a, a managed care company. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was 30 something I decided I was going to play hockey professionally. And wow. I stunk as a hockey player and uh, I was able to hook on through, however I was able to hook on to, to some minor league pro teams and I was a guy that did the fighting. I, mm -hmm. uh, in Every game I ever played professionally, I never even got a shot on net, and I wasn't a goalie. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of fights. I did a lot of fighting, mm -hmm. and um, and and that was a blast. Mm -hmm. And then when that all where came, were you? In I played. Uh, I played for four teams for a yeah. bunch of years up in uh, Quebec, mm -hmm. and then I got. Uh, I was working for Anaheim in the NHL, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. working as an associate coach with the with the Mighty Ducks, and then uh, doing doing a lot of their stats and dealing mm -hmm. with, with things yeah. like that. Wow. And then um, I wound up hooking on with a guy in Flint, Michigan, who they were looking for a fighter because there was, during one of the strikes, there was a big verbal war going back and forth, so they <laughs> hired me. I came in and uh, developed a good friendship with him, and I went from him in Flint, we went to Richmond together, to Elmira, uh, New York, mm -hmm. and uh, I played for I don't know, maybe 20 teams mm -hmm. in my career, and wow, uh, yeah, never, never got a shot on that. So, mm -hmm. but still have a lot of great friends from there too. Mm -hmm. So, wow, it's uh, yeah, that was, that was quite a whirlwind, you know. And, mm -hmm. and looking yeah. back, I was also about 500 pounds back then uh, oh. without exaggerating. Uh -huh. Wow. So, uh -huh. you know, you wouldn't bring a guy six foot four, 500 pounds onto a team and say, "Go work on the power play," or you know, uh, "I'm going to have you." Mm -hmm. You know, I was there for a certain reason, and mm -hmm. everyone knew what it was for, and okay. my teammates as well as the other teammates did. So mm -hmm. when I was on the ice, they would either send a guy out to fight me, and if they didn't, then I went off the ice and let someone go out and play. Mm -hmm. um, I see, yeah. But it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Uh -huh. you know, yeah. 20 years, you said? Yeah, off and yeah. on. Uh -huh. off and, and then on. a change from that? Yep, 
Yeah, yeah. then I... Uh, back to school, was it? Back to school. I went to mm -hmm. nursing school. Mm -hmm. And um, What was your, you know, hockey as a fighter to uh, yeah, school from, as a nurse? I went uh, from healer. putting them in the hospital to yeah. getting them out. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> what was that? How did that happen? Well, I, it, it's something that I had been kicking back and forth mm -hmm. for a long time on the job that I was doing. Uh, I love doing the hockey, but, you know, that wasn't going to pay my bills for too much longer. No. Um, and my other fallback career, I didn't want to go back to doing construction. I just didn't love that. Yeah. And um, the office job that I had, I didn't, I didn't like that a little. I traveled all over the country, hmm. and it was fine when you were single. It was a little less fine when you got married, and when you had a kid, it was horrible. Mm -hmm. You know, you didn't, mm. you never saw your kid. So uh, my wife and I got together and spoke about it and she decided that that would be the right thing to do so we uh, we bit the bullet for a few years and lived on one income and mm -hmm. I went to nursing school passed my boards and now I'm a nurse at the uh, at the prison in Norfolk mm -hmm. which yeah. is uh, which is very interesting uh -huh. how long have you been there I started in October I just okay. I mm -hmm. finished school in the end of July Wow this is moving fast yeah uh, since going to school yeah. <clears throat> yep uh, I finished school in July and took my boards uh, mid-September. As soon as I found out, I went and interviewed, and I think I started uh, October 4th mm -hmm. is when I started. And, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's crazy. When I first got there, uh, I would say I used, uh, on a 100% scale, I would say my daily use, I would do maybe 70% of my hockey skills. Huh. You know, wow. Just, just uh. trying to... Yeah, there was a tremendous amount of shock and awe dealing with the, you know, now I'm in a, in a, a, a six foot square room yeah. with metal bars with this guy that killed four people or mm -hmm. raped or was a molester, you know, wh whatever they did. Uh, so now, you know, I'm from Hopkinton. We didn't have stuff like, we had shoplifters mm -hmm. and we had people that drove fast mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. uh, and that was it. So, you know, you see this guy on the news that, that, uh, that killed his wife or this guy that did that. Now I'm the only guy in this room dealing with this guy, so who knows what's going to happen. You know, in my, mm -hmm. in my head, I'm thinking, this guy's got life sentence. You know, if he tries to do something else, what more can happen to him? Mm -hmm. So, and it's also a manipulating game that the, that the inmates play with you. They'll try to manipulate you physically or mentally. So you kind of have to draw your line in the sand, and when they mm -hmm. cross it, you have to let them know that they cross it. And so I did, and mm -hmm. um, it never became a physical battle, but it was verbal, and there was some yelling. And uh, and then when they saw that they couldn't manipulate me physically, they went. They tried to do it mentally, and I think that I've that I've passed their initiation. And so I went from maybe a, a sixty or seventy percent of of, uh, of being aggressive to, to and maybe. 10% EMT uh, training that I had when mm -hmm. I was with the fire department, and then 20 or 30% nursing. Mm -hmm. So now it's about 5% of the hockey stuff, and mm -hmm. it's just with the new inmates that try to test you, and, mm -hmm. and uh, now it's all nursing. You know, mm -hmm. I, didn't, I have no desire to, to be in a physical occupation anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I got into yeah. nursing to help people, not to, not to uh, cause more pain. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a big... Uh, it was a big hurdle to, to figure out how these guys, what made them tick. Mm -hmm. And once you can figure out how, you, how, you can, how they make them, how you make them tick, uh, then you can give the appropriate care. And mm -hmm. uh, I really do like my job. The eight hours goes by very, very quickly. And mm -hmm. um, it's, a, it's a very interesting environment. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's interesting. At Norfolk, it's the most populated prison in the state. And the mm -hmm. difference between a jail and a prison is Jail is a sentence of less than two and a half years. Prison is two and a half years and more. Okay. So Norfolk is 1,800 inmates. Wow, um, that is a lot. And I'd say that I've seen all of them, uh, okay. if not all, at least 1,500 of them. And I have yet to find one that has said that they were guilty. Mm -hmm. was, you know, they were all framed, or they all didn't do it, or it was someone else. And, mm. uh, you know, and, and some of the nurses that come on, or physical therapists, or people in the healthcare, you're not naturally cynical, you know, you, you generally try to take people at their word. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if you do take these people at their word, it can get you jammed up pretty good. Um, I've done, uh, I think I've done pretty well in, 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 
finding a middle place on mm -hmm. how to deal with them and not deal with their crime, deal with, you know, they've already been con convicted. Mm -hmm. um, we've got, you know, the worst of the worst. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you just sit there and if they get a cut, you put a Band-Aid on them and when they start telling you how innocent they are, you just send them along and mm -hmm. uh, see, I mean, there's lines and lines and lines of inmates. There's, mm -hmm. You see, I've had hangings, there's stabbings, there's, mm -hmm. this is just in the last few months. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I've actually just taken another position at the Supermax mm -hmm. prison in Shirley, and that place, I'm going to start there on the 20th, and that place is... A Supermax uh, is... It's a level six mm -hmm. uh, prison, which is the, the highest level security in the state. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It doesn't get any higher. Walpole used to be a level six, okay. uh, four, five, six years ago, I think it was. They, they changed to a classification prison where they, now that anyone who's sentenced to more than two and a half years goes to Walpole, they sit there, uh, they do a little bit of time, and then they classify them to whichever prison they're going to go to. And they may stay in Walpole, mm -hmm. but they're med medium security, same as Norfolk and Bay State and Concord and, and some of these other prisons around the state. Mm -hmm. uh, but surely, the, it's called Sousa Baranowski. Um, and the reason it's called Sousa Baranowski is there were two guards in 1971 who were stabbed to death um, at a riot in Norfolk. Mm -hmm. And they named the prison after them, but it's the Supermax. It's all electronic. It's built in 1998. Um, there's a, a guy from town that's a retired captain from there, and, and uh, I'm friendly with him, and he was giving me some information on it, and that kind of piqued my interest, and so mm -hmm. I'm going to start over there uh, on the 20th. So mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to that. That'll be crazy. It'll be a lot more trauma mm -hmm. and a lot less chronic diseases. So, mm -hmm. Which I understand is something that you are comfortable with working. Oh, with. sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. my, growing up, my mother was a nurse. And mm -hmm. uh, if you saw the neighborhood kids that we that we hung out with, oh. there was trauma on an so hourly basis. So it's related. It's, it uh, is. It seems yeah. like there is a trajectory a here. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yep. Uh-huh. And uh, it's not uh, an easy job. Uh, no. And, uh, so it is fortunate uh, for you to be comfortable and good at your work and yeah. fortunate for the men in prison there and for that whole system yeah. that you're on your way over there. Yeah, I hope so. And uh, so what keeps you uh, grounded otherwise? Uh, well, my kids, you know, everything I do is my kids and my wife, you know, mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah. it's amazing. I had a great run of about 38 years of no kids okay. and where I was carefree, you know, did whatever you want, whenever you want. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's amazing once mm. you, I have a daughter, my daughter's the older, she's four and a half. And now it's, you know, I actually look forward to going Saturday morning to gymnastics to watch her mm -hmm. uh, mm. do her gymnastics or my uh -huh. son uh, coming up with a new word or, or uh, you know, a new phrase. Or I'll be at work and my wife will send me a text of my son singing an alphabet song, which I used to make fun of all my friends hmm. for mm -hmm. getting stuff like that. Now I kind of like it. So, what is it about kids? Where, you know, that's uh, no changing idea. your it, world. It allows that's... me to legally act like one again. Mm -hmm. you okay. Know, I say uh -huh. that I'm just yeah. helping my kids uh, enjoy their experience. Mm -hmm. you know, but uh, you know, I can go to the mall with them and be loud and obnoxious and mm -hmm. make them laugh and scream, mm -hmm. and it's accepted. Mm -hmm. you know, but when I was 35, it wasn't. It sounds like uh, joy in yeah. a way, right? Yeah, uh, it is. Childhood has that in it, yep. as well as uh, you're dealing with a lot of hard things sure. uh, in, as a fighter and now in prison, but uh, you know, you, uh, you're connecting back with childhood oh, yeah. and joy and also connection. It sounds like that's something you've had yep. through this life. Yeah, um, and um, you know, if you're having a bad day at the prison or the guys are going to start getting mm -hmm. to you, you know that in just a matter of a couple hours you can go home and Mm -hmm. Be with mm -hmm. your family. You know these guys. Mm -hmm. No matter how how they may think they have the upper hand on you, they're in their six by eight cell for mm -hmm. the rest of their lives, and I get to leave there and drive home in my truck and stop and get a soda if I want and come home and see the kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh huh. And I know you mentioned sense of humor. Uh, one of your mentors taught you that, and kind of optimism when yeah. you were a kid to get you through some of the hard times, and it sounds like you have a reputation for that, yeah. uh, that that continues on with you through your life. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I don't know, do you have um, any uh, quick little uh, story, uh, a funny moment in your life? Oh, you I have can a lot of funny moments. end us with uh, um, in two minutes? 
I can, uh, well, yesterday was April Fool's Day. Yes, it was. Yeah. And I was working uh -huh. at the prison, and uh -huh. there's this inmate that we have that's, uh, I don't know, mid 80s. Oh, and every, okay. I see him every day for his insulin. So he comes in every day for insulin, and every day he's telling me he's, he's waiting to hear for his, uh, his cataract surgery. Mm -hmm. So every day he comes in. So yesterday he comes in, and before he could say anything, I said his name, and, and uh, I said, hey, your cataract surgery was approved. You're all set. You're ready to go. He's like, really? I said, yeah, you're all set. I, I think it's Friday. You're going in to, to have the cataract. He goes, so I can finally read my Fifty Shades of Grey? Uh -huh. I said, yeah, I'm just <laughs> kidding with you. It's April Fool's. Uh -huh. and, uh, I mean, there had to be 75 inmates around that were just hysterically mm -hmm. laughing. And, mm -hmm. and he laughed about uh -huh. it, too. He's like, oh, yeah. you got me. You uh -huh. got me. So, Does he really want to read the book? Uh, he really does. I, yeah. I imagine that's uh, that's a pretty big thing in, uh -huh. <laughs> in prison. Um, uh -huh. And a funny hockey story. Mm. I went out to fight this guy, uh, Donald Brashear, who is a uh, a prominent fighter in the NHL. Mm. And during the strike, he was out. He was out with us. So I went out and I lined up with him. And I said, All right, "You're ready. We're as soon as I drop the puck, we're going to go." And he says, "I'm going to kick your you fat." Okay. And yeah. <laughs> uh, I look at him and I said, you know, we're both big, because mm -hmm. he's this big monsters man. I said, we're both big. I said, the only difference is I do it with a fork and you do it with a needle. Uh -huh. So they dropped the puck and he skated away and couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> couldn't fight me because he was laughing so hard, uh -huh. which is good because wow. he would have killed me. Uh huh. So. Wow. Well, <laughs> those are uh, different and interesting, yeah. funny stories. And yeah. uh, it's obvious that stays with you and helps to guide you. And yep. uh, I know we're at the end of our time for an interview right. and it went by very fast. And I just want to thank you very much for well, sharing for a bit here. of your home and your life stories.